So today we're going to talk a little bit more about properties of waves in general, get some vocabulary under our belt that we will use in our discussion of light waves and electron waves. And then we will move into discussing light and really get into the meat of this unit of what is light, what is an electron. And we'll begin by thinking about the one thing we have already figured out, which is light has at least some wave-like properties. So, properties of waves. Words. We need some words. So, over here on the wave machine, we have a wave. And we can talk about the wavelength, where the wavelength is distance from one point on the wave to the same point. So wavelength could be from this peak to this peak, or from zero to zero, or trough to trough. All those distances are the same. Those are the wavelengths. And the wavelength is measured in meters. So for this little example over here, this wave goes from zero, maximum, zero, trough, zero. So it's like the middle picture, which gives me a wavelength of about one meter. It's a meter stick. The wave is a meter long. So this wave has a wavelength of one meter. If I adjust it, change the wave a little bit, now we see it goes zero, peak, zero, trough, zero, and now the wavelength is not one meter, but instead half a meter stick, so half a meter. So this wave has a wavelength of half a meter, whereas this one has a wavelength of a full meter. Okay. We also have the idea of the amplitude. So here's a peak, here's a trough. The difference from either peak to the sort of middle average or from trough to the middle average is what we call the amplitude. So over here, to measure the amplitude of this wave, I would stick my meter stick this way. And it looks to be, I don't know, about five centimeters, something like that. Kind of hard to estimate on this wave. In addition to wavelength and amplitude, we can also talk about how long it takes for a point to go up and down. So think about this as one point on the wave bouncing up and down. We can talk about how long does it take for a point on the wave to go from trough to peak to trough, or over here, from trough to peak to trough. The amount of time that that takes is going to be the period and will be measured in seconds. So in here, we will work in SI, System International of Units, we will not work in what I call barbaric units. There shall be no inches or ergs or anything like that. Meters, kilograms, seconds will be the nor norm of the day. On the Moodle page, there's a document of math I expect you to know. I expect you to know it. It's things like trigonometry, area of a circle, stuff like that. But I also expect you to know the SI prefixes nano to giga. I will not give you those. And if you come on an exam and come to the TAs and say, how big is a micrometer? We're going to have to say, tough cookie, that's something you were supposed to know. So make flashcards for nano to giga. I will not expect you to know yocto or pico or femto, but nano to giga, I think, are, is fair game. <clears throat> so period, time it takes to go up and down, measured in seconds. I can also count not just, yeah. Yeah, there's a document on the Moodle page that has them listed in there. It's the standard SI prefixes. 
So nano, micro, milli, centi, deci, deca, hecto? No one uses that one. Kilo, mega, and giga. Those. So instead of period, I can also count how many times this thing oscillates in one second. I could say how many oscillations per second does this thing or a point on this wave make? So how many times a second do they oscillate? That quantity is known as the frequency. That quantity is known as the frequency. And it's going to be one over how much time. Right? If it takes half a second for this thing to go from bottom to top to bottom, if that takes half a second, then it's going to do two of those in a second. So if period is half a second, frequency will be two. The unit of frequency is how many per second, or one over seconds, which has a fun little name, hertz. Like, it hurts. H-E-R-T-Z. So here's some basic terms. Like I said, we will use these terms for all of the waves we discuss, electrons and light. Another prediction. Like I said, this is just a prediction. I want you to think about demos before we actually do them. So what do you think? Can I change the frequency? I mean, can I change the amplitude without changing the frequency? Good. Our main camera is not working, so we're sort of hacking this together. So here we have our two... That's really weird to see yourself like that. Anyway, so we have two springs that are the same. I'm going to pull same amount of mass on each. I'm going to pull them down different amounts. And we're going to see if the frequencies are the same or different for these two. Okay? So here we go. This one kind of likes a swing, but more or less... Yes. They are more... That, that one's pretty good. They are more or less hitting the bottom at the same time each time. So they have different amplitudes. They're swinging a different amount, but they are completing that trip in the same amount of time. So different travels, same amount of time, same frequency. Okay. Hmm. So amplitude is not related to frequency, or amplitude can be changed independent of frequency. Amplitude can be changed independent of wavelength. Hmm. Are all these things just independent of each other? So now it's time to actually start thinking on your own. Now it looks like most people got it. Correct answer is? I'll take it. Yes, A. So we know that wavelength is measured in meters. We know that frequency is in hertz or one over seconds. So lambda times F will be meters over seconds, which is a velocity, which tells us something. What's the only velocity that we could have? The speed of the wave. It's the only speed we could talk about. So we have the speed of the wave is going to be lambda F. The speed of the wave is going to be lambda F. Okay? So this is the first type of thing that you're going to be seeing on your homework. Up to now, we've just sort of been laying the groundwork, getting some definitions under our belts. This is the first kind of a thing you're going to really see on your homework. So if we know that the speed of a wave is, is fixed, for example, famously, light travels at a fixed speed, then if the frequency goes up, 
then we know that the wavelength, what's the wavelength going to do? So, all right, we go back. We know that V is going to be lambda F. The speed is fixed. If the frequency, if the frequency goes up, and lambda times f has to be the same thing, then that is going to tell me that the wavelength must go down. So you can see that this is a mathematical reasoning using symbols and not numbers. Remember one of the goals I talked about first day was working in symbols and not in numbers. So here's an example of that. Questions on this one? Let's see what you've come up with. Let's see what you've come up with. On the count of three. One, two, three. We still got a little bit of a spread. We still got a little bit of a spread, mostly between A and C. Mostly between A and C. Someone who said A want to explain why C is wrong. You were up first. Go for it. So, quick pause. This here is telling us that the wavelength is going to get bigger. So, uh, so that goes up, which means the frequency would have to go down. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that the frequency will go down. Good. Good. Frequency is how many cycles per second. T t period is how long it takes to get one. The way to remember it is just think about something that takes half a second to go up and down. If it takes half a second to go up and down, how many cycles per second does it make? Two. Right? It goes two in a second. So if the frequency goes down, the time is going to go up. Someone had a very nice visual, visual of it, used a nice visual argument, said, okay, if I've got a wave and then I have another wave where I've increased the wavelength and both of these are traveling at the same speed, then the time to go from peak to peak is going to go up. If both of these are traveling along together, let me sync them up. They're both traveling. I so can't draw. There we go. Close enough. They're traveling along together. Which wave is going to hit the next peak first? The top one or the bottom one? Yeah, the top one's going to hit it first. The bottom one's going to take longer. There's another nice graphical way to see it. I liked that explanation. That was nice. <laughs>